Welcome back to another video. Today we have the new 2024 Honda HRV LX and the Luna Silver Metallic with the gray interior. So there's three different levels to the HRV. You have the LX, which is the base model, which is this one. You have the Sport, which is right in the middle, and EXL, which will be your highest and fully loaded trim. For 24, everything is very identical to 23 as far as the looks. All HRVs will have full LED high beam, low beam, and turn signals. No more fog lights, those are actually gone. But you do have some flat black down below here on the LX, flat black on the lower grille, and uh, I guess this is not really kind of flat black on the grill itself, I would say. You do have one chrome piece, which is the H right up front. Other than that, it's a huge redesign from the previous HRV, a complete different look actually. Some people will say this looks like a Ford Escape. Some say it looks like a, I forgot what the other vehicle is. But when you see it from front, it's pretty unique. You can tell it's an HRV. Um, it'll be hard to tell it's a Honda at front with this new grill design. But once you see that H in the front, you know what's going on. So the HRV is on the Civic chassis now because the fit is no longer here in the United States. And because of that, the HRV did grow a little bit. So you looking around the side, the LX will get 17s. And these are 215 and 60 17s. And you get kind of a silver finished wheel or rim. If you go up to the EXL, you get the same exact design, just a different color. And if you get a Sport, it's one inch bigger. So they're 18 and they're gloss black. You do got some flat black on the wheel wells as well. It's not too thick. You can get, I believe, um, bigger like uh, clouding fenders. I think it comes up to here if I'm not mistaken. We'll check out the accessories. Without putting anything on it, this is how it'll look. And you do have the wider windshield because it's on the Civic chassis. You do get the new wipers too from the Civic where the water, like the nozzle sprays off the wiper and not from the hood. So when you clean your windshield wiper, it sprays in front of the wiper and wipe accordingly. You do have the updated Honda Sensing, so a wider camera up there. Honda Sensing is standard on every trim level. You just won't get blind spot on the LX, but you will have blind spot on Sport and EXL if it's available. And you don't get any turn signals here. Save that for the higher trims. But the top of the mirror is body color. The bottom is just a regular black. Around the windows too, it's just black. There's no chrome on it. Not a lot of chrome at all on the LX model. This is supposed to be the base model, your A to B. The side mirror is also on the lower portion of the door, not in the corner. I believe that's supposed to help with visibility. My favorite part of the HRV is the rear. And I love the new design of the tail lights. They're full LED. They're not a combo like regular light and LED bulbs. Everything's LED. So the turn signals, the brake lights, and reverse lights is all LED. And you do have an all-wheel badge in the back. So this is kind of from the original CRV where they used to have the all-wheel drive sticker if you got an all-wheel drive model. Also, you have the wiper exposed back there. Um, you do have a window spoiler, but it don't come out too much, but it's body colored with some flat black on the side. Overall though, I like the design, especially on the, on the LX. This is the base model, so this is not supposed to look too crazy. You don't have any exposed exhaust at all. This does have the two liter four cylinder engine, so you get a single exhaust and not dual. So there is no turbo available on the HRV, just the two liter and that's it. And so far we don't have hybrids either. I'm sure that's coming pretty soon, but as of right now, it's not available. I do have it running because it's a hot day today. So make sure the AC is blasting in there. But here's the key for the HRV. So you can see it's lock, unlock, pop the trunk. Well, it won't open the trunk, but it will unlock the trunk. Cause you still gotta manually open it and your panic button. And there's a built-in key inside of the fob as well, but no remote start. That starts on Sport and EXL. Also, Smart Entry starts on Sport and EXL. So if you look here, there's no button here to lock it, and there's no, um, like, uh, I forgot the call. There's no sensor behind the door handle to unlock it, so you still have to just hit unlock, and it'll unlock the door. If you want Smart Entry, that's also Sport and Up, and you can see there's no blind spot either. And that's standard on the LX sport and up as well so if you want a little bit more goodies you have the next trim up you can go to now with the gray interior it have some gray all over the dash and on the door you do have an auto up down feature only on the driver's door the passenger and rear windows you have to hold um, the locks are power the mirrors are power too i like this finish for the door handle even though it's a base model gives it some i guess a premium taste have some gray on the door handle too and it's soft it's actually real soft 
Usually the LX don't have this portion soft or this soft. This feels very good. Top portion is it's hard, hard plastic, but this is, this, you're gonna love this. This feels very good. The driver's seat is manual. So you have manual up and down, manual for your back, and you pull the bar for the forward and back. Same thing on the passenger side too. So no power option for the seat. And we're gonna get in here, get out of the sun. And interior is actually really nice, especially the gray interior with all these little gray, um, I would say accents to break up some of the black. So you have it around the vent. And over here, you do have a traction control button. Let me zoom in there. And that's pretty much it. I'm done now. Some storage down here, maybe like a queen storage. You do have a cup uh, holder there with some more storage as well. So it's really nice, really roomy. Down there is how you pop the hood. And that's it down there. And you do have your half digital, half analog cluster. And this is cool because this is straight from all of our other cars. The Accord had this, the Civic. CRV, the Pilot, almost all the Hondas have it. So you guys should be very familiar with the screen here. And you do have a home button here and a scroll wheel. So if you hit home, it'll bring up your menu. And if you use the wheel, you can cycle through the different options. So you have range and fuel where we were just on. This is gonna show you how many miles you have on your tank and what you're averaging as well. Don't mind that average right now because these vehicles literally just came off the truck. And speed and time. You have a driver attention, so if you're waking up the drive, this one is all-wheel drive, so you can see how the torque is being split between the front wheels and the rear wheels. You can see who have their seat belts on, which is cool. Oil life, your safety features. So with this guy, you can see what's on. And because it's the LX, you won't have a blind spot on and off option, so you don't have blind spot, but you at least can turn on and off your road departure mitigation and your collision mitigation braking. And then you can scroll down. Oh, let me go back. There we go. You can have nothing. You can change the brightness. And then all of your door settings is going to be under settings. So if you want to change like door unlock, um, door lock, all that good stuff, it's all going to be under here too. I actually prefer that to be on the screen here, but Honda made it on here. So it is what it is. You have uh, your gauge display settings, your warnings, and that's pretty much it. So very configurable. The right side, it's analog. So the speedometer. It'll stay as a speedometer, it won't change. You do have your speed limit and digital in the middle too, and your miles and your gas and what gear you're in. You do have auto headlights, even though it's an LX, and then you have parking lights on and off, no fog light. Right stock is gonna be your wiper, so you have off, intermediate, low, high, and then same thing for the rear wiper, you have off, intermediate, and on, and your wiper washer too, so your front washer and rear washer as well. And it's telling you to do the front wipe, the front washer, you pull it this way. I ain't gonna do that now. But on the steering wheel, you do have your volume knob, you have a source. This quickly switch from AM, FM, and if you have Bluetooth paired, Bluetooth as well. And you have next track, previous track, you have voice commands. So if you actually hold this guy, it'll be Siri, which is cool. And if you have an Android phone, I'm sure it should be Google Assistant. I'm not too sure but I haven't tried it with an Android uh, phone. And coming on to the right side, most of your Honda sensing features are here. So this is how you turn on your cruise control and you see a little, little um, symbol there. When you don't see a car, actually let me zoom and show you guys. When is, when is a cruise control symbol like that guy right there with no car? This is regular cruise control, so it won't automatically slow down. But if you hold this button, it'll put it into, oh, I turned it off. No, I'm sorry, if you hold this button, not that one, if you hold this one, then it will put it into adaptive cruise control as well. So you have the option between the new cruise control and the old cruise control. And the new cruise control will slow you down based on the distance that you have set. So for example, you have different levels right there. So you have three, two, one. One is the closest, four is the furthest. So if you're driving and you set your speed at a certain speed and no one's in front of you, you're gonna be cruising at the speed that you have set and based on the distance that you set, if a car gets in front of you, your HRV will actually slow down and keep that distance that you set right here. So that's all that guy does. But if you don't want it to automatically slow down for you, you hold it and then put you, if you'll put it back into cruise mode. And then you have lane keep assist here. So when you turn that guy on, you see the little uh, picture with the lanes or the steering wheel. And all that, that will do is keep you centered in your lane. The camera up here will read your lane and keep you centered. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but make sure you still at least have a, a hand on the wheel. Like, it's not made to drive for you. And then you have your resume, you have your set, you have your cancel. That's traditional. So I can hit that to just turn everything off. 
Coming on to the right here in the middle, you do have a touchscreen display. This is going to be your 7-inch display. If you get an EXL, you get the bigger 9-inch. If you get a Sport, you get the same exact screen as this. And you have volume, you have a tuning knob, it is touchscreen as well. And you get some shortcuts down here. It's real easy to use since you don't really have a home feature on here. Like the 9-inch display you get in the EXL. You have next track, previous, shortcuts of your phone, AM, FM. This will switch between USB and Bluetooth. And when your phone is plugged in, this will switch between Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And then you have a back key and menu. But real easy, real easy to use. Put it into reverse so you guys can see the backup camera. It's a multi-angle backup camera. I think the resolution could have been a little bit better, but it's actually still fine. You have a wide angle, and you have normal looking straight, and then you have a top-down view as well. And with the wide angle, you can see, it's actually really wide. So if you're in a parking space and you're coming out, you see what cars coming from the left and what cars coming from the right. It's actually pretty convenient. A lot of people actually prefer to use that than anything else. And with the HRV, it is following the Civic with the new vent design. HRV does kind of get its own version of it. And I'm glad it's not exactly the same like the Civic. And it's actually pretty cool. These vents are easy to use. It's not like, um, it don't feel as premium with as the little joysticks that you get in the Civic that clicks. But this is more subtle and chill and less in your face. And coming on down here, you have your climate control, single zone. You get dual zone, I think if you go up to the EXL, you can at least put it to exactly what temperature you want. So instead of it being red and blue, you can put exactly exactly the degree. And you have your modes here, fan speed here. And you do get auto, which is cool. You get auto, even though this is an LX. And you have air circulation, front defrost. Uh, heated back glass, no heated side mirrors. I believe you have to go up to the sport to get that, or maybe the EXL. Um, AC on and off, and then down here you have one USB A port with a um, storage down here, nothing crazy. And you have cup holders here, and you have your shift knob here, and it's not leather. Also, your steering wheel is not leather either. You go up to the sport to get a leather steering wheel, it's the regular poly or air thing um, material. And for the transmission, you have park, reverse, new to drive. You can put the transmission to a sport mode or put the transmission into a low mode. And you also have drive modes too. So when you toggle this up and down, you have normal. Let me zoom in there. You have econ and snow. And snow is actually new for the HRV. You never had snow before. So that's if you get the all wheel drive. Um, I believe two wheel drive also comes with snow mode as well. And you do have a downhill cruise control. So it's called a hill descent control. And you can set it up to 12 miles per hour. I guess it's more for off roading, if I'm not mistaken. See, I got it on right there. And it'll show you from 2 to 12, and you can set it to between there. But I'm not sure if most of you guys are going to be using that because you're probably bought, buying this for A to B, you're in the city, or just on highway, stuff like that. So, anyways, you have electronic parking brake, and you have your brake hold feature. So, when you're in drive and your foot is on the brake and you have brake hold on, seatbelt has to be on. You can take your foot off the gas, I mean, off the brake, and the HRV won't move till you give it gas to go again. And then once you stop, It'll keep holding your brake till you turn that feature back off. Even your brake lights in the rear will be on too. It's actually pretty cool. Um, one thing that is new for 24 is you get USB C's uh, plugins here instead of USB A's. On the 23s, these were A's. Now they're C's here. So that's actually pretty cool. So you do get one USB A there. And I believe that's how you use Apple CarPlay Android Auto, but this is only going to be for charging. If I'm not mistaken, because I don't think they put a charging symbol if it's for Apple CarPlay Android Auto. It'll be just a USB symbol. Could be wrong, but I believe that's how it is. You do get a little pass-through here, too. So, a unique design there. I like that. And I like how the gray, like I said, the gray just kind of breaks up all of the, the black in here. Um, black is a popular interior color, so you probably see more options with the black interior than the gray interior. Because a lot of people don't want to keep this clean over time. The black just, you don't got to worry about cleaning it. It's black. You won't see anything. Um, you have your glove box over here, simple glove box, nothing crazy, and it's not lockable either. And then here's your seat design here. I like the new, this is the design overall of it. It's comfortable, not too hard, not too soft. And then you have your your uh, passenger door over there. And then coming up over here, you do have a rear view mirror that's not auto auto dimming. So standard, you have to flip it if somebody got the high beams on. And there's no moonroof in here either. So the LX, no moonroof at all. Sport, no moonroof. You have to get an EXL to get a moonroof. But because you don't have a moonroof, you do have more headspace. So if you're kind of tall, you and let's say LX and Sport is the only choice, you can't get an EXL, at least you get more headspace because you don't have the moonroof. And you have your visors here. No light in the passenger. 
no light in the driver. And then you have your LED lighting, which is nice. It, it don't look like LED on the camera, but it's LED in person. And you can have your door, your lights come on when you open the door, you have it off, you have it on. And that's pretty much it. So let's jump into the rear seats, see what we got going on back there. This is how wide the rear door is open. Not too bad. And getting back here, you do have more leg room than the previous HRV. The rear door you can notice is smaller than the front door, but it does follow. So it's not as soft as the driver's door, but it's okay. And up here, it's just hard as well. But you still get the same design, so that's cool. Same um, door handle, I like that. Um, no air vents back here and no USB-C. You have a, a storage here. I don't know what you're gonna put back here, your phone? I don't even know. But you got a driver with no mat pocket. Passenger seat has one mat pocket. And it's comfortable back here. There's no armrests either. So it is. it does seat three, but I don't know who's gonna be sitting in this middle seat. I do love that the bars are exposed for car seats. So this is going to be very easy to uh, put car seats in here because everyone already hates putting in car seats. And just look at the cockpit view while we're back here. So compared to the previous HRV, it is a, like a huge upgrade in design and just feeling. Um, but it's still an HRV. You know, you're still in the 20s. So you're not going to get a lot of creature comforts in the LX, especially in this model. I do love that HRV have this new map light where you touch it and it turns on. There's no button. It's like touch sensitive and it's LED. Actually, really nice. Let's jump out of here. Let's go look at the trunk now. Oh gosh. Just have to wind down the window, let myself out because I guess the chow lock is on. I was a little locked in the back here. Yeah. So that's how you put on the chow lock. Lock myself in there. So the trunk, there's no power options on the trunk at all. Even if you get an EXL, you have to lift it up like that. But pretty spacious. Being that this is a fresh unit, it still had all the plastic and stuff on here. So you got all that stuff back here. Also, it'll come with carpet mats. You can all add the rubber mats as an accessory. And this one has a cargo tray. You can add this as an accessory too, but yours will just come with, if you get one with nothing, it'll just come with um, the carpet floor. And you do get some storage under here. And you do get a spare tire in there as well, if you guys could see that. I wasn't trying to lift all that stuff up. One thing you will lose from the previous HRV is magic seating. So you're able to fold the rear seats up and down. This one, because you're on the Civic chassis, you can't fold this bottom seat up anymore, like the Fit used to be able to do. And because the HRV is no longer in that Fit chassis, you lose it. Because I believe the gas tank on the previous HRV was up forward, so you're able to have that that Honda, uh, Honda Magic Seat feature, but the Civic gas tank is in a normal position, so you can't have it no more. So at least you can still fold down the seats and they split on the LX and you get plenty of room. This is probably why you get an HRV over the Civic because one, you don't want to be sitting low on the ground. The HRV is, it's not as high as a CRV, but it's not as low as a Civic. Also, you're probably someone that maybe you travel by yourself you just need a little A to B to get around town. Cause look at the size of it. It's like, it's not big at all. The CRV is too big. This is like the perfect size. Also, if you're not a speed racer, you're not out there racing everyone, then you're gonna be fine with the engine. But if you're used to all these turbo engines and making 200 horsepower, then you're gonna be disappointed with HRV cause this makes like 158. Cause this is the same two liter from the LX and Sport Civics. And that's non-turbo. I mean, it's, it bumps up the horsepower. I think it gets six more horsepower than the previous HRV, or it's like seven more horsepower or something like that. But it's still a good cruiser. Um, when you're going up a hill and you have like a full house, it may scream a little bit going up the hill because, you know, the weight and if you get all-wheel drive and, you know, it's still a four-cylinder. But if you're by yourself driving around, you're going to love it. It's going to be fine. If you don't got to race anyone, you're going to love this as well. You get a power outlet back here with LED lighting on both sides. You have an optional uh, cargo cover you can put in here and it's kind of just like a, a cover that you slide in here and then when the trunk is closed, it won't show what's in your trunk. But overall though, I like the HRV for what it is, but I know if you're someone that's used to Civic and the turbo engine and turbo motor, you're probably gonna drive this and not like the power. So I recommend to drive it, definitely. They got the LED lighting on 
definitely a beautiful vehicle too, especially in the lunar silver. The lunar silver to gray is a good combination. The 2024 HRVs are flying in, they're coming in, and if you're shopping HRV, you missed out on the 23, or you're trying to get a last minute 23, trying to compare 23 to 24, it's the same thing. I mean, the 23s was the redesign, so I don't expect you know it to change for 24. But I did point out that you do have two USB Cs in that center, you know, the center console. I'll say, not center console, yeah, center console versus uh 23, 23 with USB A's. But let's jump in here. We're on the LX. And uh, one thing I love about the LX is just, it's, you know, you don't need crazy bells and whistles. You want the safety features. You want A to B. It still comes with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Actually, let's go through the list. Go through the list. So you get a two liter four cylinder engine, 158 horsepower, 138 foot pound of torque. I was just saying in the last clip, people were complaining that the horsepower, blah, 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 blah. I really, like the HRV has always been not a fast vehicle, you know, and everyone that I've sold the HRV to, they were not looking for something fast. Like they needed an A to B and that's it. Um, it would be nice if they did made an HRV with a turbo engine, but I don't know how many people would need, because if they put a turbo engine in there, they think Honda is saying that the cost is going to go up. So the HRV is already mid to almost, you know, high 20s to low 30s. So if they add a turbo engine in there, who's paying 34, 34, you know, like 35 for HRV because it's turbo. And then like, like, I, I don't know, I just, I don't know because I'm a salesperson and I work there and I've seen so many people buy the HRV and love, like I go on, I don't know how many test drives I've been on, but uh, I've been on many HRV test drives, even in previous generation. I have some, so many people that drive it and they love how it drives. They love the power, everything on it. So I think everyone that would want a turbo, like people just complaining that it needs a turbo. I don't think they would even bought one, you know, like, I don't know. That's just me. Um, manual, uh, continuous variable transmission is the only transmission on it. I know the previous HRV had a manual option and I remember those. And to be honest, those manuals sat on the lot. So I know why they got rid of the manual. Um, you can get the LX in all wheel drive. You have a drive by wire throttle system, eco assist, three modes, um, hill descent control, hill start assist, electronic parking brake. Most of this I kind of went over in the video. And then you have your Honda sensing here. So your collision, mitigation braking, forward collision warning, road departure warning, lane departure warning, um, upgraded airbags, and drivers uh in front. Yeah, so the driver and passenger the driver and passenger have knee airbags, which is cool. So extra airbags, 23 is the same thing. And it just you get all these goodies here. You can pause the video, read it if you want to go through it. I'm not going through all of those. You do have adaptive cruise control, lean keep assist, traffic jam assist. So it's kind of like uh, adaptive cruise control at lower speeds, which is cool. Traffic sign recognition. So it'll tell you the speed limit sign when you pass the speed limit. Auto high beam, you know, which is on an LX. Like, you know, like it's, it's, it's cool that they add all this stuff on here. Automatic climate control, Bluetooth. You know, you get the touchscreen display. You get a, so the four speaker system, 180 watts and you do have Bluetooth, you see the 2.5. So yeah, so it looks like the 2.5, the USB-A is for Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Can you see it here? And I think that the, the um, oh, here we go right here. So 3.0 USB-C is only for charging as well. So that's what's new for 24, 23, you got the A's. So yeah, Honda Link and all the basic goodies. So let's kind of break this thing down. Um, backup camera, push button start, no smart entry, but at least you have a fob. Bluetooth, safety features. You want either all-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, and you want a hatchback. That's the way to go. When Civic's too low, you get the HRV. And if you want more power, then either get a Civic hatchback or get a CRV. I don't know what to tell you. All right, so let's jump in and build in one now. Here we are on Honda's website. You can go to Honda Cars or automobiles.honda.com. They both the same thing. And you have three different trim levels. So let's jump into the LX. Now, the version that we just walked around is an all-wheel drive, but if you get a two-wheel drive, it's $1,500 less than all-wheel drive. So if you're really trying to save money, 
I'm actually show you guys. If you don't get a premium color, you're looking MSRP at 25,395. So just to kind of give you a heads up, but no, I'm not changing. What am I doing? Powertrain. But our model was an all-wheel drive, and the gas mileage on the all-wheel drive. Let me see. Yep, Mac is about to die. Um, 25 city and 30 highway. So that's the version we just did, and I guess Mac is like, hurry up, you know, do what you gotta do. I'm about to die on you. But yeah, we're gonna put all-wheel drive on there, and here are the colors options on the LX. So you have black. And black only comes with black cloth interior. You have um, that silver that we just did. Oh, so silver only comes with gray. I'm over here saying, oh yeah, this one is the gray interior. Silver only comes with gray. So with the LX, you don't really get too much options. You know, I, I, I you know, Honda's not gonna make a lot of these. Modern steel, so you get at least you get two options with the gray. So you can get either gray with gray or gray with black. So that's cool. But still, if you click the video and you want to see what the gray interior looks like. Oh, that's my uh, my computer. I was like, what is that sound? Um, if you do Nordic Forest Pearl, which is $455 more, it's standard with gray interior, no black interior. And if you go with white, you have the option between gray or black interior. So white is $455 more, so $455 more, the premium color in Honda's eyes. And gray and white is the only way you can get uh option between the gray interior or if you get the green and so on and so on so let's look at the wheels because we always look at the wheels and you can add an hbd wheel and we're all gay interesting interesting i know the bronze is not going to be everyone's cup of tea but that's pretty interesting why am i going interior colors all right go to packages so they have a rugged package you can add on the lx and let's see what that looks like. Okay, this thing added fender flares. That's what I was telling you guys in the video earlier that you can add fender flares if you want a little bit more. Um, I guess it gives it more rugged off-road look. But fender flares, oh, you get a different, oh, you get a grill trim, interesting. So you get this little piece right down here and you get the lower door trim as well. Interesting, I guess this is supposed to make the HRV look more off-roady, okay. Pretty cool. You have the HVD. Um, I'm dying to see what this looks like in person. And this guy. So you get a, oh you get a trim right here. You get a side trim, and the decals. That's cool. I like how it looks with a little sticker on there too. I really like the wheels. It does give it a rugged uh, look with the wheels on it. So, okay. All right. So I'm over here messing with the accessories. Um, let me show you guys the full MSRP on the one I just reviewed. So base price is twenty five six, and uh, Platinum White Pearl will add four fifty five to the price. Plus your destination and handling, you're looking at an MSRP of twenty seven three fifty. Now it depends on where you live, because I've seen some people saying that they can get under MSRP at their dealership. Some dealerships, um, well, some some people in the comments say that they have a markup that they pay more over the MSRP. Some people say they have to pay MSRP. So depending on where you live, um, I don't know. You may pay differently. Um, here with me, you know, HRV is just a hot seller. So that's why I even, I didn't even wait till the car was clean. Like as soon as it came and arrived the truck and got PDI'd, I jumped right on it because these cars sell so fast that, you know, I can't risk not doing a video on it because I'm waiting for it to be clean and then it sells and I can wait for the next one. So that's that, but I'm going to end everything here. I hope you guys enjoyed the walk around on the HRV. So we already did the 24 Sport. And we did the LX. Um, next, I'm going to do an EXL. Kind of see the differences, what it has, all that good stuff. But comment below. Let me know what you think of the HRV. Do you hate it? Did you bought one? Did you pass on HRV for something else? And why? Um, is the engine really a big deal to you? Like, do you have to have a turbo in the HRV? You know, like, I think the 2 liter is fine. For, like, for this market, it's fine. I know I think the Kona is, the, like, the size, and that comes with a turbo. But... I just, like, I don't know. If I was shopping for HRV, I don't know if I would be looking for, I want something fast, you know, like a Kona N, you know, like, I don't, it'll, I don't know, that don't make sense. If I want something fast, I'll get some, you know, like a car or maybe a bigger SUV, but drop a comment, tell me what you guys think. I'm going to end everything here. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to catch you guys in the next walk around.